Jensen, touchdown, Bison. North Dakota State has won its third straight FCS championship. There's a reason it's not easy to get beyond the Fargo Dome. Three-time defending champ North Dakota State has won 21 straight in this building. But Joe Mowgli as Coastal Carolina shots and clears have been the ultimate road warriors this season. You know the stakes. Two teams enter. Only one moves on to the semifinals. It's the NCAA FCS Football Championship presented by Northwestern Mutual. A quarterfinal rematch from last year. Coastal Carolina invading Fargo to take on North Dakota State. One team already moved on to the semifinals. Last night, New Hampshire at home with a big second half took care of Chattanooga. Three more tickets to the semis will be punched today. Good afternoon, Anish Schroff, alongside former first-round pick Kelly Stauffer. The North Dakota State Bison are the gold standard of the FCS, three straight national championships. But this, in many ways, is a new Bison team. It's not the same one we've been accustomed to seeing the last few years. Yeah, and you, you know what's really interesting is when you can marry inevitable change and maintain the continuity that North Dakota State has been able to do. You can see right there, 23 seniors, Craig Bowles in Laramie, Wyoming. Chris Kleiman comes in and takes over, DC to head coach and multiple assistants. And oh, by the way, a new quarterback, Brock Jensen is gone in his three national championships, but Carson Wentz is an immense talent physically, but he's in his first title run. He's gonna have to get it done at a high level today. The M.O. is still the same with John Crockett, a physical run game. We'll see if they can do that this afternoon. Coastal Carolina's head coach is Joe Moglia. His background is business. He was the former CEO of TD Ameritrade, a former Wall Street Titan. He's using business principles for this game as he teaches philosophy. That is really intriguing to me. And the business model says this, know your variables and manage those variables appropriately. And Joe Moglia is trying to do that with this. The variable of noise here in the dome is significant. They didn't handle it well last year. We'll see how they do this year. It is going to get loud here at the Fargo Dome. It might be like Farter Town. We're back with the opening kick after this. Both of these schools were ranked number one at some point during the 2014 season. We're about ready for kickoff. Time now to show you how both of these teams will plan for success, and that's brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Well, Coastal Carolina is going to have to handle two things, the noise in this place and also the physical style of play with North Dakota State is going to get after from the beginning. North Dakota State, conversely, they have to fight for those extra yards. Look early for three yards to become four and a half, five yards. If they're doing that early, it's going to be a long day for Coastal Carolina. Alex Katrin with a line drive kick. Eric Perkins from his own one-yard line for North Dakota State. And Perkins upended at the 17. And we meet the Bison offense. This is a North Dakota State team that has won three consecutive FCS titles. They dominated in their postseason run a year ago. In this building, 21 straight wins. 13 in a row in the postseason. But as we mentioned in the open, change has been a big theme in this 2014 season. And, of course, there is a new quarterback, Carson Wentz, in his first year as a starter, 12-1. And, and he replaced Brock Jensen, the winningest quarterback in FCS history. On 
first down. 1,500-yard rusher John Crockett to the 20-yard line for a gain of four, tackled by Leroy Cummings. Carson Wentz, Anish, is a huge talent. His skill set is enormous. He's a big guy, 6'6", 230-plus pounds. You can see right there his stats on the year. He typically takes really good care of the football. And as far as a physical skill set, actually outpaces Brock Jensen, who, by the way, has three national championships right here in this place. Here comes the blitz from Brett Johnson. Wentz has time. Now he's flushed. The ball came out. Wentz able to recover and actually picked up a couple of yards. Third down coming up for North Dakota State. And good pass protection early. And what you're going to see is Brock Jensen was maybe more of a nimble-footed guy, but Wentz is fast, big physical guy in the pocket, but he also is a mobile guy. He's a very good athlete. Look for the quarterback run game to be squarely on the table here this afternoon. Five receiver look. North Dakota State playing without its top receiver. Zach Vra out with a hamstring injury. Wentz on the run. That ball is complete and it's a first down. Trevor Gebhardt picks up six and moves the chains for the Bison. North Dakota State anticipating third down pressure, which Coastal Carolina is known for. Slight movement of the pocket. You can see right there a decent throw, a nice catch by Gibhart in the conversion. Very important early on for North Dakota State to possess the football and start to impose their will offensively on Coastal Carolina's defensive front four in particular. Two tight end set. On the ground. Crockett gets the edge, turns up field. Gets a block from Gebhardt. Crockett down the sideline. Cuts it back toward the middle. Touchdown, John Crockett. 70 yards. John Crockett getting the Bison on the board first. Explosive plays killed Coastal Carolina in their quarterfinal game last year. And it's an explosive play for the Bison on their first drive of the game. Well, the first question for Coastal Carolina defensively is can they hold up to the physical play of the Bison offensively? And the answer so far has been absolutely not. And that's what we see right there. The double, double polar scheme, and it could be a tight end, a fullback in this case, and also an offensive lineman, Jesse Hines, the center pulling, leading two guys around the edge, and then Crockett is the workhorse for this physical nature. Gebhardt outside also is working hard. When you play wide receiver for the Bison, you have to be willing to block outside. And you can see Trevor Gebhardt right there turns a 10 to 12 play into a gasher early for Bison, the Bison. Coastal Carolina hadn't allowed a first quarter touchdown in its last five games. In fact, they'd outscored their opponents 41 to three in the first quarter over the last five games. On the season, that's been the shot to clear Zemo, getting off to a fast start. And remember what happened here about a year ago, this matchup, and it snowballed on Coastal Carolina early. They were down 31 to nothing after about 27 minutes. Tom Barnison to kick it off for North Dakota State. Normal kickoff man at punter Ben LeCompte nursing a quad injury. Coastal will start from its own 25-yard line. The Shanta Clears opened the season with 11 consecutive wins. They were ranked number one in the nation at one point, but lost the regular season finale to Liberty on a blocked field goal. That likely cost this team a chance at a top four seed. In many ways, the matchup that you're seeing in the quarters right now, about a month ago, we thought this could be a championship matchup.
D'Angelo Henderson leading rusher in the Big South to the 30-yard line. He picks up five, tackled by Esley Thornton. You heard the crowd when North Dakota State had the ball. It was like a library. Now it's like Thunderdome. Henderson again up the middle and he's brought down by Colton Hegel after a first down for the shot to clears Hegel one of two Buck Buchanan Award finalists on this North Dakota State defense the other is defensive end Kyle Emanuel Alex Ross over the middle that's caught by Bruce Mapp he's the top receiver for the shot to clears Ross, the big, 12, uh, big South Offensive Player of the Year, and it's second and two. Now how loud is it? You see the decibel meter right there, almost 100. Zone read, Ross will keep it. And he picks up a couple, close to a first down. And it is. A first down. And Anish, what Coastal Carolina wants to do offensively to begin this game is they want to kind of give North Dakota State some of their own medicine. Get downhill in a physical run game, which actually will help Coastal Carolina manage the noise here this afternoon if they can be successful with that phase of the game. Ross downfield for Map makes the catch, stays on his feet, and finally. Taken down inside the 20 yard line. Bruce Mapp playing with an injured ankle picks up 40. And matched up on a really good cover corner in CJ Smith. And watch right at the very end. Smith looks back for the ball and loses contact with Bruce Mapp. Mapp is a big bodied receiver. Alex Ross loves to throw it up to his receivers. That's a good example of it early in this game. Ross will keep it. And he's to the nine yard line. Alex Ross, Coastal Carolina's all time leader in passing yards and completions. He's had a terrific season. And like a number of the members on this Chanticleer team, they came into this game with something to prove after last year's debacle. Ross on second down to the air. Incomplete. Good coverage that time by C.J. Smith. And Alex Wheat, the wide receiver, just ran out of real estate. We get back to talking about quarterback Alex Ross. And the other thing we're going to see today is Alex Ross is a viable runner with the football as well. And it's called the plus one run game. And North Dakota State defensively, we're concerned about that. They didn't see a lot of it out of Ross a year ago because they got behind so early. But look for number four to carry the football. Going empty on third down. And don't be surprised if a quarterback draws on the table. The well, of game. Number four of the offense, five yards, remains third down. That's one for the crowd. Yeah, chalk one up for the home team crowd right here, and that's exactly what Coastal Carolina did not manage well a year ago. That variable that Joe Mowgli had talked about is the noise. You have to manage it. It's not the invisible component. It is real, but you, you can manage it. You have to get the play out, get to the line of scrimmage, not a lot of checking at the line of scrimmage, and get a successful play going. Ross to the air. He wants map incomplete. Blanket covers that time by the safety Dudzik in the corner, Smith. And it's fourth down, and Coastal Carolina will call on the field goal unit. This has been a problematic area down the stretch. Alex Katrin was the kicker, lost his job after struggling against Youngstown State. Ryan Granger, 
against Richmond in the second round, missed his first attempt. Katrin came in, hit the next two, and Katrin will have the first go today from 32 yards. The kick is good, and Coastal Carolina gets on the board. All things considered, pretty good answer by the shots of clears. Yeah, not a bad start at all compared to a year ago. We see North Dakota State's physical run game early. Coastal Carolina answers. They have to settle for three, but not a bad start early. Last year, North Dakota State and Coastal Carolina met right here in the quarterfinals. And in many ways, it was over before it started. The Bison raced out to a 31-0 lead. They ended up winning big 48 to 14, 623 yards of total offense for the Bison, 424 on the ground. Maybe the most impressive thing about North Dakota State, though, was its focus. That game took place the week after it was announced Craig Bowl would be going to Wyoming. And Joe Moglia, Coastal Carolina's coach, took away from less some lessons from that game. Yeah, there are a lot of things that Coastal Carolina learned and at least has the opportunity to apply here in this environment. Easier said than done. Perkins for the one. And he's to the 24-yard line, a 23-yard return. Second try on offense for the Bison of North Dakota State. You know, Anisha, North Dakota State stands for a lot of things in this program, but we talked about the physical run game offensively, play action passing game. Wentz is the orchestrator of that now, but defensively, it's defending third down and defending the red zone. And they do that so well. Only four touchdowns in the last 11 red zone trips, and we saw that. North Coastal Carolina drove the football, but they could not get in the end zone in the end. Play action. Wentz with time throws on the run and hits Kerry Woods along that far sideline. It's a gain of 13 yards and a North Dakota State first down. And once again, North Dakota State moving the pocket, anticipating the zone pressure from Coastal Carolina. And you see Woods just running the defensive back off and then snapping it off as Wentz was rolling his direction. And Woods is one of those guys that has to step up. Zach Bra. The senior wide receiver and the biggest vertical threat is not playing today. We need to see more out of 83. Out of the eye. This is Crockett looking for the edge. Vicious stiff arm. And he's out of bounds after a gain of about five. Our impact matchup when North Dakota State has the ball. You've got Crockett, who we already saw bust a 70-yard run. Erzendowski, a true freshman, last week's hero. He's going to be counted on for more with Bra out. And Quinn Backus is a tackling machine. The Nebraska transfer, King Frazier, in to spell Crockett. Frazier plunges across the middle and he's to the 46 yard line a couple of yards shy of the marker. And Quinn Backus is that volume tackler. He's he's not extraordinarily physical. He has 400 plus tackles as we see right there and he gets in the right place. He's at typically doing the right thing. He's also kind of a defensive eraser. He allows for some flexibility on that side of the ball because he can erase a lot of mistakes. He's a three-time conference player of the year as Frazier pushes ahead and picks up a first down for the Bison. And by the way, it is the Bison. The Z might be invisible, but it's not silence. Yeah, it's understood. There's no doubt about it. And you'll hear about it if you get it wrong. There's <laughs> no question about that. They built a pretty significant brand here in Fargo, North Dakota. Game day has been here the last two years. And success has been plentiful here. 55 and 3 since the start of 2011. Wentz looking for Gebhardt. Makes the catch, run out of bounds by Denzel Rice. A gain of 15, another first down. Carson Wentz is an impressive athlete. He's a big guy standing in the pocket, gets away from the line of scrimmage with efficiency, and then Gebhardt running the out route, and that ball is on a frozen rope out to him. 
there have been NFL scouts in here already multiple times taking a look mainly at Kyle Emanuel and he told the coaching staff, you know who your best player is? It's your quarterback, number 11. He has NFL talent. There isn't any question about that. Crockett on the counter. Slips past Backup and Backus, and then he's gobbled up right at the line of scrimmage. This is what Coastal Carolina is going to have to do defensively is come up with some negative plays once in a while and get North Dakota State behind schedule and force Carson Wentz to make some plays in the passing game. I don't think North Dakota State is as talented and as deep on the perimeter in the pass game as they have been in the past. So that's an area that is a question mark coming here today. Coastal showing blitz. Here comes Brent Johnson from up the middle. Screen pass and it's knocked down. Jabari Bothwell got his hand on it, and it's third and long. And if you're Coastal Carolina, these are the situations you want to get the Bison in. Yeah, huge missed opportunity. North Dakota State is anticipating the pressure. A screen outside to the running back against the middle pressure is a perfect call. Just was not executed well at 6-6. Wentz has to get that ball over the defender right there. Chase Morlock in the backfield on third and long. Here's the blitz. Wentz over the middle. That's caught in traffic. Carry Woods again. He's to the 20-yard line. And it's a first down. Woods is a guy who had to step up with Braw out. Yeah, the timing throw on the skinny post. You can see Woods just sets the defender outside. The ball is delivered big and on time. Once again, we see that strong arm by Wentz and a really good route by Kerry Woods. He is that guy that has to step up a niche with Bra out of the game here today. Two catches, 30 yards for the sophomore out of Bemidji. Fake on the jet sweep. Open receiver, Kevin Vaughn with the tight end. And the Bison two for two with two scoring drives, both touchdowns. What an impressive start for North Dakota State offensively. When you can run the football with the physical attitude, play action pass is lethal. And we see it right there. The big body tied in benefiting from that run game. Play action pass, invite the linebackers up and hit the big tight end behind them. Two drives, two touchdowns for North Dakota State. Wentz to the sixth year senior, Kevin Bodlin. With Kelly Stauffer and East Shroff, New Hampshire, the Wildcats, the top seed, moved on to the semifinals with a Friday night win against Chattanooga. Eastern Washington, Illinois State later today. Eastern has Vernon Adams, one of three finalists for the Peyton Award, the Heisman of the FCS. Some news for Villanova, their Peyton Award finalist and their quarterback, John Robertson, wow. will not play against Sam Houston State. Robertson out with a concussion. Yeah, symptoms that showed up late and then showed up again this morning, and that's unfortunate because Villanova had a chance to make something happen, and John Robinson is a tremendous player at that position. Tom Barnes to kick it off. The dangerous Devin Brown back deep for Coastal Carolina. Brown's going to have a chance. Zigzags across the 20 yard line to the 23, a 21 yard return. Let's go back to North Dakota State's last touchdown. Well, North Dakota State is already running the ball in a physical way, but this is what you do next. It's the play action passing game. The tight end is just going to get down the middle as you play action in the backfield, invite the second level defenders up, and then throw to the big tight end behind him. If North Dakota State established this, the run first, Tight ends are going to be lethal down the middle of the field. D'Angelo Henderson. First team all conference running back in the Big South with a nice pickup on first down. Henderson over 2,000 yards rushing for his career. He had big shoes to fill coming into the season. Last year, the shot to clears had Lorenzo Tagliaferro 
who's now with the Baltimore Ravens. Henderson, a little shake and bake. He gets a block, still on his feet, and Henderson across midfield into Bison territory for a gain of 25. Chad Hamilton is kind of the epicenter of what Coastal Carolina wants to do in the pass game and run game. You can see him shoving Kyle Emanuel down inside, and that's one of the matchups that we want to keep an eye on. Kyle Emanuel is probably an NFL-type edge rusher, and Chad Hamilton is certainly an NFL guy. He'll get a look. If he was three or four inches taller, we'd be hearing a lot more about 73, but tremendous feet on that big body. That's the game within the game. Emmanuel, 16 and a half sacks this season. Ross downfield, he wants Map and a flag on the play. C.J. Smith held him. I think that's exactly what the call is going to be. C.J. Smith in press coverage, and Map is just releasing to the fade, and Smith, I think, is going to get called for the hole. Interference, number six of the defense. It's a spot foul, automatic first down. And what that is, Anish, it's a hold early, and then when the ball's in the air, it morphs into pass interference. And I'm not so sure about that. It might have been a hold early, but I didn't see a whole lot of that going on when the ball was in the air. I think pretty decent coverage by C.J. Smith. Henderson again. You can see the patience with Henderson, and he picks up 11 for a shot to clear first down. And the patience, as you mentioned, Anish, but it's also the ability to be quick in the box. And even though he's only 5'8 and about 200 pounds, there's a lot of yards after contact in that small body, and we saw it on that previous play. 51 yards on the ground already for Henderson. They feed him again. And finally wrestled down by Carlton Littlejohn and Colton Hegel after a gain of five. Watch the isolation here between 73 Hamilton and Emmanuel. You can see Emmanuel coming down inside, and Hamilton's more than happy just to continue to push Kyle Emmanuel inside, knowing that Henderson has the lateral cut ability to bounce it out outside the edge. In motion on the ground. This is Oshamar Abercrombie. And he's close to the first down. Going to be a little short. Third and short coming up for Coastal Carolina. North Dakota State has not allowed a first quarter touchdown since the Weber State game back on September 6th. The Coastal Carolina has to finish drives. Threes aren't going to get it done today the way North Dakota State is already performing offensively. You have to finish drives in the red zone. Abercrombie on third and short, pushing forward. And he has stopped short of the first down, fourth down coming up. Joe Mowgli is going to have to make a decision right here, and I think he already has. He's going to go for it. They're a very, very good fourth down team, nine out of 11 this season. And I think you have to throw the hammer down right here in this. You have to pull out all the stops to overcome this environment, overcome the tradition here at North Dakota State to win games like this. The decimal level is going up as we speak. Henderson on fourth and one and gets ahead with the surge as Coastal Carolina moves the chains. So far, D'Angelo Henderson is having his way in the running game for Coastal. And he's creating a lot of room himself. Watch the cutback right there. There was quick penetration by Brian Schatz, number 61, the nose tackle. And Henderson created that first down on his own, and that's the lateral kind of jump stop cut ability we see out of D'Angelo Henderson. Ross directing traffic pre-snap. Henderson again. And he's tackled by shots at the nine-yard line, a gain of three, second down. 
Coastal Carolina early in the issues like we talked about giving North Dakota State some of their own medicine. It's a power running game up inside that time there were two polars coming from the left one of them was the tackle we talked about Chad Hamilton leading Henderson up the middle to the right. Coastal has been able to move the ball early on. They have to finish drives though here at the Fargo Dome. Speed option. Ross to Henderson. Barrels across the five yard line. Marked down at the four. And it's going to be third and short. Speed option out of Alex Ross is typically a check at the line of scrimmage. You attack the end man on the line. You either keep it or pitch it. And you can see the yards after contact once again by Henderson. That's impressive. How do you get in the end zone or at least extend it? If you get down to the two yard line, you get another roll of the dice. You feed Henderson again? I think you do right here. Well, they put Henderson in motion. Ross, quarterback draw. And he's got six. Coastal Carolina answers right back. Well, just as you asked that question, Henderson was motioning out of the backfield, leaving Coastal Carolina in an empty set. Quintessential quarterback draw out of an empty set right there, and you can see that the extra effort gets Ross into the end zone, and a terrific answer. Austin Kane to hold. He ran in a two point conversion last week against Richmond. Katrin's point after is good. So North Dakota State scores on its first two drives. Coastal with an answer each time. A field goal the first time, and then Alex Ross diving in for the quarterback sneak touchdown. Tonight, the most prestigious individual honor in college football goes out. The Heisman Trophy, Oregon's Marcus Mariota, Melvin Gordon of Wisconsin, and Alabama's Amari Cooper, the three finalists. I like Mariota to win this. Yeah, I think um, easily. I think probably the largest margin of victory vote-wise since, I think it was Reggie Bush. And I think Mariota is going to run away with it. And by the way, I picked him to win this award before the season started. Nobody's keeping track of that. Yeah, I just I knew you wouldn't be. So I wanted to remind you of that personally. <laughs> you can watch the Heisman presentation 8 p.m. on ESPN. Eric Perkins from inside his own five yard line. Perkins gets out of the scrum across the 30 to the 31. And we say hello to the studio, the president of the Martin Scorsese fan club, Adnan Verk. <laughs> Back to my man, Shroff. I expect some Coen Brothers references from Adnan, who is the resident movie buff in Bristol. John Crockett on first down. Pushes forward to the 34-yard line, a gain of two. Coastal Carolina defensively had only allowed 26 points in the first quarter all season, 14 so far today. And from what we've seen from the Bison offense, it's been surgical so far. And once again, the cornerstone is that physical power run game, and it's something that Coastal Carolina can't really plan for. They don't see it a lot in their conference, and they don't see it like this anywhere in the FCS, quite frankly. Ball batted down right at the line of scrimmage. Calvin Hollenhorst got his hand on it. That's not easy to do against Wentz, who's six foot six. And that's the second time we've seen the batted ball. The first time was on a screen that would have been a huge play, and Hollenhorst gets his hand up there. At 6'6", six, six, as a quarterback, you have to understand that the defensive end does not get pushed. He's going to get his hands up, but it's still at 6'6". Six, six, you have to get that ball over top of him. The Bison perfect on third down so far. 49% on the season, which is seventh in the FCS. Four-man rush. 
That's caught by Woods, but he's going to be wrapped up immediately. C.J. Thompson and Cameron Summers right there, and North Dakota State will have to punt for the first time today. Really good developments for Coastal Carolina early in this game. Remember how it went a year ago. They got just avalanched early, but to answer offensively and then come with a three and out here on this drive defensively is tremendous for them. Ben Lacombe shanks this one into about the seventh row. And he's been nursing a bit of a quad injury. That's something to keep an eye out for. Lecomte, when healthy, one of the best punters in the FCS. Yeah, that's that's part of the M.O. of this program is field position, play good defense, physical run game, field position. Lecomte is right at the center of that, but that was a horrific effort. That was an 11-yard punt. And it literally went about halfway up the stands to our side. That was bad. The only positive out of that was somebody got a souvenir. Do we have to return those? Throw them back in? Good luck. Security comes and retrieves those, I think. Outstanding starting field position. Here's Henderson. Using the stiff arm, gets out of bounds. Inside buys in territory. A gain of four. And that brings us to the end of a very exciting opening quarter in Fargo. The three-time defending champs up by four. With Kelly Stoffer and Ishraf from the Fargo Dome FCS quarterfinals. A rematch of a meeting from last year in the quarters. Coastal Carolina and North Dakota State. Shanta clears with the ball. The Bison 46. Alex Ross fires it incomplete. He wanted the tight end, Wyke. I think North Dakota State is, is pretty happy with their matchup on the back end against this receiving core for Coastal Carolina. Even though they know they're deep, the style of coverage on the back end, kind of a zone cover two, a Tampa two type zone, very hard to find those voids in that coverage in North Dakota State. and rush four. Ross slings it over the middle. It's tipped and it's incomplete. They tried to thread it in, in there to his top receiver, Bruce Mapp. Carlton Littlejohn got his hand on at the linebacker. And you can see Littlejohn right there, number 38, in the middle of the field, and that's a characteristic of that Tampa 2 coverage I was just talking about. Two high safeties, and then that nickel linebacker in the middle runs deep middle and takes away the throw just like that. Well executed by Carlton Littlejohn on that play. Littlejohn, a first-team all-conference linebacker in a stacked Missouri Valley League. Christian Dudzik, fair catch of the 15 after a 31-yard punt. If you're just joining us, North Dakota State getting on the board on its opening drive. John Crockett, 70 yards to the house for a touchdown. Coastal Carolina would answer back with a field goal. The Bison, next time around, Carson Wentz to his tight end, Kevin Vaughlin, and then an Alex Ross, four-yard run. Made it 14 to 10. Both teams have traded punts since. And the Bison will now start just inside their own 16-yard line. Crockett, the deep back, and the three-receiver look. Crockett on first down. Fighting for extra yards. And he is to the 18, a gain of two. North Dakota State talked to us about the fact that, you know, they, an early sign for them is when those three-yard runs become four and a half and five yard runs because of the effort up front and the effort in particular by John Crockett carrying the football the majority of the time. And right now, we're not seeing a lot of those. That was a basically a two yard run that was stuffed at the line of scrimmage and then barely eked out that. So good sign up front for Coastal Carolina early. Play action, Wentz in trouble trying to get away and he gets rid of the football 
Incomplete second and ten. Carson Wentz avoiding the sack. And a big, big quarterback stands in the pocket, and he actually comes up hobbling a little bit. Great job of getting the throw off in the vicinity of an eligible receiver and not taking the sack. But once again, third and eight is much to the liking of Coastal Carolina defensively. Here's the blitz. Wentz gets rid of it. Slant route. Room to run. It's the fullback. Make that R.J. Erzendowski, the true freshman, with a gain of 41 yards. North Dakota State runs a stack formation, and Erzendowski is right there and is just going to come clean. The reason they go to that stack formation is Coastal Carolina likes to press coverage and you can't press in that situation. How about the Bison going tempo? Wentz bounces off one defender and he's to the 39 for a short gain. Second down. Erzendowski was the hero last week. He had the game winning touchdown against South Dakota State in the final minute. And Erzendowski has been important all year and he was a guy that started flashing in camp and the offensive staff said, you know what? He keeps making plays on our best cover guy, which is C.J. Smith defensively. So he became kind of the second in line behind Zach Braw. Now he's front and center with Braw out of the game here today. Rocket pushes ahead inside the 35 to the 34. Third and three. That was a significant push for North Dakota State up front. And what they like to do a lot of times, it's called the double polar type game. And you see that there's a fullback in there, there's a tight end in there, and then the push. It's just yellow jerseys covering up defenders, and then Crockett gets in behind them. That's a good sign when North Dakota State is winning that way on the line of scrimmage. Same kind of thing to the opposite side here. They'll feed Crockett again. <laughs> Kelly, you talked about it. There's that extra push at the end. Good enough for a first down as the Bison move the chains. And the temperature taker is Andrew Bonnet, number 46. You can see he goes in motion, and then Carson Wentz will either call him back or tell him to stay. And then he's the point of contact in the run game. And that's what we saw in the last two plays. They just flipped it and ran the same thing on that play. Back to Crockett. And again, fighting and churning for extra yards. He's to the 25 yard line, a gain of four. The 2014 NCAA FCS Championship continues next weekend with semifinal round games on December 19th and 20th. You can watch on the Watch ESPN app at ESPN3.com. For more info, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 89 NCAA championships. King Frazier now the deep back in the eye. Frazier gets the call. Breaks the tackle, still on his feet. They'll mark him down at the 21-yard line, a pickup of four for the transfer out of Nebraska. The presentation of North Dakota State offensively changes via formation, but the desire is still the same thing. It's a physical downhill power run game. That time it was double tight ends in what's called an ace formation, one on either side, but you still have a physical fullback and a two running back run game to get downhill in a hurry. That's Crockett, and that's good enough for a first down. North Dakota State now six of seven on third downs. Last week, Coastal Carolina held Richmond to just two of 13 on third downs, and the Spiders came into that game number one in the nation in third down conversion percentage. Crockett is already over 100 at 10 yards a pop. 
but Richmond didn't run the football like North Dakota State does. They were more of a passing team that worked well matchup wise for Coastal Carolina defensively. They could get after the quarterback. It's hard to get after the quarterback in this game. That's the fullback Andrew Bonnet. And the first team all conference fullback picks up six. Is Bonnet a fullback or is Bonnet a tight end? And that's actually the question that Coastal Carolina has to answer a lot of times because he's in there as a move tight end on a couple of plays already on this drive. And that time he's a prototypical fullback that carries the football. Tremendous athlete at 6'3", 250. But how does the defense define number 46? He's also pretty good as a ball catcher out of the backfield. On the ground again. Here's Frazier. And he's upended by Pernell Williams, the safety for Coastal Carolina. He was a first team all conference player in the Big South. And he's one of the leaders on the back end for the Shots of Clears. Coastal Carolina has a defensive lineman down. I can't make up out the number, but you're already seeing signs of wear and tear. It's actually Leroy Cummins that's yep. down, one of those defensive tackles. But that's the toll that this physical run game by the Bison takes. North Dakota State driving third and three for the Bison when we come back. North Dakota State has already converted three third downs on this drive. This is the fourth. Third and three, 12th play of the drive coming up. Bonnet in motion. John Crockett already over the 100 yard mark and he stopped at the 10 yard line. So fourth down now for the Bison. And let's see if Coach Kleiman decides to go for it. He will not. That last play certainly was significant for Coastal Carolina and it was a power play once again, but defended quite well by Coastal Carolina and the, Conversely, Coastal Carolina, they obviously have to defend that third down position better, and they did on that play. Adam Keller, who has four toes on his kicking foot from 27 yards, and it is good. He's now made nine straight field goals. It's his 26th field goal of the season, one shy of tying the NCAA's FCS record. It is success. North Dakota State wins the Division I football championship. And succession. Chris Kleiman, first season at the helm. Change and continuity. Touchdown! What a play! It's carrying the torch and passing it and carrying it again. And the tradition of the Bison lives on. It is the definition of a dynasty. They're building toward a dynasty here. Three championships with one core, but if North Dakota State can win it this year, essentially after hitting the reset button in many ways, following 2013, it would be as impressive a title that the Bison have had in their run. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I think the turnover that they've experienced in so many ways, you know, we talked about it, 24 seniors, a new head coach, most of the staff had to be yeah. replaced. Craig Bowl took most of his assistants with him to Wyoming. Here's Devin Brown. Two career kickoff returns for a touchdown. Brown burst of speed. He's across midfield. Nobody in front of him. There goes Devin Brown. And Coastal Carolina has an extra point from tying this game. A 98-yard return for Brown, who took one back from 99 yards against North Carolina A&T earlier this year. Well, if you're going to come into this environment and beat the three-time defending champions, you have to answer. And oh, what an answer this is by Devin Brown. Takes it the distance, and 
as so many times is the case in these we talk about offense and defense and the third phase special teams a lot of times in games like this is the deciding factor. Coastal now shifts back to their kick formation. Austin Kane, number 35, the holder, did run in a two-point conversion last week. Point after by Katrin is good, and we are all tied at 17. Joe Moglia, the head coach for Coastal Carolina in his third season. One of the great stories, really, in college football. He was an assistant at Dartmouth in the early 80s, decided to give up football, went into finance, worked at Merrill Lynch, climbed the ladder there, made a fortune on Wall Street, ended up being the CEO of TD Ameritrade. He's still the chairman of that company. Then he wanted to pursue his passion, got out of the finance game in 2008. Great timing, by the way. Took essentially an apprenticeship with Bo Pelini at Nebraska. A few years later, was able to transition into a head coaching job at Coastal Carolina. There was some controversy when he was first hired. People wondered if he was qualified. You don't really hear those whispers anymore. And wondered if he had bought his way into the position, quite frankly. But I think the uh, result speaks for itself thus far. And Joe Mowgli has so many things to teach those young kids in his program. And what a great opportunity for them to learn from a man like that. There was a Wall Street Journal article recently which postulated that maybe the Jets should kick the tires on Mowgli as a possible head coaching candidate should they part ways with Rex Ryan. There's Eric Perkins, and he's pushed out of bounds. Oh, he's back in bounds near the 25-yard line. Let's go back to the studio and say hello to Adnan. All right, Anish, an update in the D3 semifinals over on ESPN3. Wesley and Mount Union. Mount Union, this is Kevin Burke to Sherman Wilkinson trying to make it a 10 straight finals, although Wesley averages 50 points a game. Right now it's 35 to nothing for Mount Union. Still waiting for that wood chipper there in Fargo, Anish. <laughs> I actually visited that last year when we were here. Here is the FCS bracket as it looks now. New Hampshire on its way to the semis. They beat Chattanooga last night. Illinois State, Eastern Washington, Sam Houston State, Villanova. Those games today. John Crockett still churning. And he picks up a dozen yards to the 38-yard line. Crockett 113 yards already for North Dakota State. Look at the formation here. Two tight ends to this side, and Coastal Carolina does not adjust to the formation. And so Wentz just runs to that side. You pull an offensive guard over there as well, and then Crockett just gets up into that softness. Great job of formationing for North Dakota State offensively right there. Crockett needed 197 yards today to become the single season leading rusher in school history. He might get there today. Wentz chased. Now he's got to get rid of it. He's got a receiver who's open. It's Bonnet for a pickup of nine yards. This is where I think Carson Wentz demonstrates that he's a far different quarterback than Brock Jensen was. Brock Jensen won three national championships, but he didn't have this physical skill set. That's a big man running around there, buying time, extending the play, and then find Bonnet over the middle. Well, he gave Bonnet a bit of a generous spot, so it's enough to move the chains, first and 10. Well, he told you Bonnet's a receiving threat. On the ground once again, this is Frazier. And he's to the 39, a gain of 13. We're watching vintage Bison football here. Smash mouth, dominate the line of scrimmage. And what they're doing, Anish, is North Dakota State will go to the line of scrimmage with the formation. And then you see what Wentz does at the line of scrimmage. If he likes the numbers, then he just holds that formation and runs the play. Now, if there was an adjustment defensively by Coastal Carolina, Wentz would conversely adjust as well. But right now, physical run game downhill for North Dakota State. Play action. Wentz all day. 
He wants six. He wants Woods. It's incomplete. On the coverage, Cameron Summers, the sophomore from Statesville, North Carolina, who had an interception last week against Richmond. And Woods running the post route late. And the fans here felt it. Summers grabbed Woods late on that post, and I didn't see it. There might have been a little contact earlier than what we just saw on the screen, but all in all, I don't think anything that deserved a yellow hanky. That's where the Bison missed Zach Fra. Really, no true vertical threat on this team right now. Crockett on the stretch play. Turns the corner. Ball comes out. Crockett was upended at the 21 yard line. It's a gain of 18. And Pernell Williams, watch number six coming from the secondary right there. He just takes a poor angle, and he's the safety that has to run the alley right out on the edge. And Crockett was definitely down before that ball came out. But not a very good run fit by Pernell Williams, an experienced safety on the back end. When Crockett gets to the edge, a safety needs to be there to close the door. 13 carries, 132 yards for Crockett. Low snap. Wentz recovers. Fires one out of the middle. Touchdown, Bison. The tight end, Luke Albers. Once again, when you run it effectively, just watch the tight end, even though it's a low snap. That second level defender has to keep their eye on the football in the backfield, and then the big tight end, Elbers in this case, is just sneaking behind him, and then a great throw by Wentz. Extra point by Keller is good for Albers. His third touchdown of the season. It was set up by another big run from who else? The senior out of Minneapolis, John Crockett. It's been the ground game for North Dakota State and Wentz to Albers for the touchdown. Buys him back on top. Carson Wentz to Luke Albers. Third touchdown of the season for the junior who is a fisheries and wildlife management major. Yeah, Luke and um, Wentz probably go hunting and fishing a lot on Sundays. I, we were told that Carson Wentz likes to do that, get up at about 5 a.m. on a brutally cold North Dakota morning and go goes hunting and fishing. He probably takes his big tight end with him. You need to get him over to the Stauffer Ranch. You got no doubt. Mountain lion and deer. They would love that. Devin Brown took the last one back. He won't get a chance here. That's Chris Jones who stumbles to the 19-yard line. What if I told you a hurricane was coming? In 2001, the University of Miami unleashed a ferocious storm of talent and swagger on college football. What if I told you you can't stop a hurricane, but you know it has to end? ESPN Films presents a 30 for 30 film brought to you by Infinity. The U, part two, tonight at 9 Eastern on ESPN. That'll be after the Heisman Trophy presentation. Well, a game that is a game about answering, Coastal Carolina is going to have to show up right here on this drive. Ross will keep it to the 21 yard line, a gain of three yards. Well, North Dakota State in the postseason last year gave up 42 points in four games through five quarters so far this season, 41 points. They still might be the best team of all the teams that are left, but they're not as dominant yeah. as they were a year ago. That's the word. They're not as dominating, but rest assured, this is still the team that you have to go through to win the national championship at this level. This is Henderson. Breaks one tackle and finally brought down after just a gain of a yard. C.J. Smith, the corner out there, is coming out of that Tampa 2 coverage. And the reason that North Dakota State runs this is they can get their corners up in the run fit. Guys get familiar with where they are on 
down the field and you saw number six C.J. Smith close and make a really good tackle on that boy. Coastal fifth of the FCS and third down conversion percentage but just one for four so far. Ross's pass that's caught. It's Tyrell Blanks and it's a big game for the shots it clears 21 yards and a first down for Coastal. Yeah, Blanks was in the slot matched up on Christian Dudzik, the, the safety, and you can see right there, just crosses the face of the safety, runs the shallow over route, and the quarterback, Ross, finds it. Coastal Carolina has had an answer each time for North Dakota State. Henderson up the middle. Picks up four to the 47 yard line. We told you earlier last year the Shanta Clears had a phenomenal running back in Lorenzo Taliaferro, who's now with the Baltimore Ravens. Coaching staff told us Henderson might have more top end speed. He's got a little more shake to him. He might be an NFL prospect as well. This is Oshamar Abercrombie. And he bulldozes across the 45-yard line of the Bison to the 44. Give him nine and a first down. Abercrombie doesn't have as much wiggle. He's more of your downhill slasher. He'll pick up the tough yards. And he's flat out yoked. He's a guy that is just one big muscle on top of the other. But you're right. He gets downhill and changes the physical nature of this run game a little bit over Henderson. Edge pressure. Ross taking a shot downfield. Map has it along that far sideline. Marked out at the 15 yard line. A gain of 29 yards. We've seen this a few times. Map matched up on CJ Smith, and Map just simply plays the ball better in the air than Smith does. Smith was in perfect position right there in that coverage, but he didn't play the ball well at the top. As Matt did. Look out for Alex Sweet here, top of your screen, 6'4. He's a red zone target. Henderson inside the 10 yard line, tackled at the seven, give him eight. And D'Angelo Henderson now with 86 yards on 13 carries. And that's the biggest story for me early in this game is Coastal Carolina offensively being able to run the football in a physical way downhill and managing the noise offensively here in this environment has been really good as well. Anderson looking to get that push from his line. And a little different close. minutia at the line of scrimmage in handling that noise this year with Coastal Carolina. Last year what they were doing is they would get a, a late kick by the quarterback and then a hand clap, and then the guard would trigger when the center snapped it. Now it's just a double hand clap by the quarterback with the offensive line getting their cue from that. Big third down. Could be another draw. It is Ross. And he has stopped short of the first down marker. So fourth down coming up. Coastal Carolina went to the quarterback draw and actually scored on it earlier in this half. And that time, they just didn't win on the line of scrimmage. Joe Moglia elects to go for the field goal. Brings his field goal unit on. And now it looks like it's going to be a fake. We got a whistle. Did North Dakota State get a timeout? Timeout on the field, North Dakota State. Their first charge, 30-second timeout. Fourth and one, Coastal Carolina, late in the first half. Fourth and one, Coastal Carolina, 35 seconds to go in the first half. The Shanta Clears have the ball at the six-yard line of North Dakota State. Andre Johnson, the short yardage back in the game. Now 
Now Ross motions out. Wildcat look. Direct snap to Johnson. He'll try to push forward. And he's got it up for a first down. North Dakota State defended that really well early, but it was the second effort by Andre Johnson. Initially, there was no push whatsoever, but Johnson ekes it out in the end. That was a good job of the second effort converting. Clock still running, 26 seconds. Now a whistle. Shots of clears at all three timeouts. Clock running. Henderson looking for a seam. Stood up at the three-yard line. And now a timeout with 13 seconds to go in the half. Let's check in with Adnan Burke. All right, Anise, thank you. Coming up at the half, Trevor Maddox will break down the Heisman Trophy presentation tonight, why Marcus Mariota is the odds-on favorite, plus Lee Corso's pick to win between Army and Navy in Kentucky, hosting North Carolina. Some great college hoops coming up later today on ESPN. All that more coming up. For now, let's send it back to you, Anish. All right, Adnan, 13 seconds to go here in the first half. Coastal Carolina knocking on the door. I thought that was interesting clock management right there. Three timeouts left, and they let probably almost 10 seconds run off the clock, and those could be valuable here down the stretch. I'm not so sure why you would conserve a timeout when you have three of them. That's a decision you make. Maybe if you have two, certainly if you only have one, but when you have three, I would have called a timeout after that conversion on third down, or excuse me, fourth down. Well, maybe the thinking is you got the ball now, what, at the two-yard line? With the two timeouts, that means you've got time for two running plays. Anderson, the deep back in the offset eye. Ross on the bootleg. Has to throw it away and gets rid of it. Third down and goal. Coastal Carolina is simply trying to get Ross outside the pocket, roll to three receivers that were flooding the corner of the end zone, but very well covered by North Dakota State defensively. This will be the 13th play of the drive. The Chanticleers started back at their own 18-yard line. I think they would feel better right here if they had about more, 10 more seconds on the clock. Give us to Johnson. There is a flag on the play. And it is against Coastal Carolina. North Dakota State got a great jump up inside. False start. Number 75 offense. Five yards. Please reset no, the game actually, clock the to nine guard seconds. guard is going to nine jump just a little bit clock. early. You can see right there the twitch from the left guard. North Dakota State got a great jump up inside. They got off the ball quickly, and Mo actually was sensing that a little bit and left a little bit early. What are you telling the quarterback here? Nine seconds left. You've got two timeouts. You don't want to play where if it ends and you've got no time left, you can't at least get a field goal. Yeah, you make a good decision. Throw the ball out of bounds. I think they have to throw it here, certainly. Ross. Throwing for the end zone, incomplete intended for John Israel. There to break it up, the safety Christian Dudzik. And it's fourth and goal. The Coastal Carolina is going to elect to get points on the board, and I certainly think that's the right decision. Not a bad play by Alex Ross there. The best passing game right now for Coastal Carolina is throwing it upstairs and letting his wide receivers go get it, and Israel almost had an opportunity to do it on that previous play. 25-yarder for Katrin, who's already connected from 32. Timeout on the field, North Dakota State. Second charge, 30-second timeout. I think North Dakota State just wants to make sure that they're buttoned up, probably go safe here defensively and just make sure there aren't any shenanigans going on by Joe Mowgli, his team. You get the feeling this game is going to come down to whoever has the ball last. John Crockett. 
got the Bajan on the board early on. A 70-yard touchdown run on North Dakota State's first drive. Then it was the tight end, Kevin Vaudlin. That made it 14-3, 14-10 after an Alex Ross touchdown. This was a game changer. Devin Brown, a 98-yard touchdown, a kick return. That tied the game. North Dakota State going back on top with a Luke Albers touchdown. And now the shot to clears, looking to close to within 24-20. And they do. A much different game than what we saw between these two teams a year ago. Last year, the Bison led 34 to 7 at the break. It's a 24 to 20 game, and Coastal Carolina will get the ball to start the third quarter. Time now for the college football halftime report. We go to the studio. Adnan Burke and Trevor Maddich standing by. Ishrop. North Dakota State leading Coastal Carolina 24 to 20 after two quarters of play about ready for the start of the third quarter the winner of this game moves on to the semifinals and the Bison Chanticleers winner will play either Sam Houston State or Villanova Wildcats currently leading without their starting quarterback John Robertson well you look at the first half last year North Dakota State led Coastal in the quarters 34 to 7 at the half the big focus for the Chanticleers handling the environment. I'd say they have passed that with flying colors. Oh, I totally agree. And that was variable number one. And Joe Maglia is teaching business-wise, right? And they've handled it very, very well. I think the delay of game penalty and maybe some stuff in the red zone that didn't work well for them as well. But I think, by and large, flying colors, they passed the test. We'll see where they go in the second half. Joe Moglia looking to lead his team to the semifinals of the FCS playoffs for the first time in school history. Chris Jones on the short kick. And he's tackled at the 26-yard line. Coastal Carolina will start after a 15-yard return. Looking at the key plays from the first half, this was the big one right off the bat. John Crockett, a 70-yard TD run on North Dakota State's opening drive. Then Carson Wentz finding R.J. Erzendowski. That was good for 41 yards. Devin Brown took a kick back 98 yards in the last two times the Bison have not kicked to him. D'Angelo Henderson. Rather Devin Brown on the jet sweep. Time of possession, Coastal Carolina has kept it close. North Dakota State prides itself on T.O.P. Yeah, it's old school offensively, and they've won the time of possession in every game they played this year. That's at least reasonable if you're Coastal Carolina. Coastal 7-0 on the road this season. The Bison have won 21 straight at the Fargo Dome. Ross. Throwing it for Brown. Did he hold on to it? He did. It is a catch near midfield. A gain of 19 yards. I'm amazed that Brown was able to get a foot down. You can see the safety. Zuds it coming over the top. That left foot gets down as the heel inbounds as well. I think so. I think that's a pretty good catch. Actually, that's a great catch and a great throw. Corner underneath the coverage. And a safety over the top, and Alex Ross drops a diamond. The previous there. play of a reception is under review. The left foot got down. We couldn't quite see whether the heel was actually on the ground. And it looks to be in. And remember, it's got to be indisputable video evidence to overturn the call. Yeah, I'm not sure. If it's sure. fuzzy at all, and I'm not talking about the video, but if it's not clear to the officials in any way, shape, or form, the call on the field stands. It's going to be interesting. We see Devin Brown right there is actually hobbled on the sideline, took a shot yep. from Christian Dudzik at the end of that catch, and he's pointing to his lower back. He might have got raked clear over into the bench area. Both teams a little banged up. Left foot that down. Wide receiver question is does he have control of the ball that's going to be hard to overturn yeah I think you're right I don't see the video evidence that it's going to take to overturn that remember it the replay booth sees everything that we just saw they get 
the best angles that we have on television and I just don't know that there's anything there that's going to allow them to overturn that. If the play stands Alex Ross will break Tyler Thigpen school record and conference record for most passing yards in a season and also the record for total offense in a season. We see Devin Brown once again getting worked on that huge kickoff return that was a big answer for Coastal Carolina in the first half and then that big play it was a corner route dropped it between a corner rolled up and a safety over the top 27 looks like he's moving pretty well right there what a great throw by Alex Ross on that previous play great throw great catch Brown of course has been a factor in this game had a 98 yard kick return for a touchdown in that first half he took one back 99 yards for a touchdown earlier this year against North Carolina A&T. That actually ended up being the game winner. Three career kickoff returns for touchdowns. And how this second half start starts is very important. North Dakota State typically makes great adjustments, have outscored their opponents 126 to 23 this season in the third quarter. After review, the receiver's heel was out of bounds, therefore an incomplete pass. I got to disagree with that. I'm not sure if that was that indisputable that his heel was out of bounds. Well, to me, if you have to debate it, and you can you tell asking the question, I just don't know that you can tell right there. Obviously, we're talking about that. I have my glasses on a nation. I wouldn't have called that indisputable. If but it is oh well. in any way, shape, or form unclear, the call on the field has to stand. That's a bad break for Coastal. And in the meantime, you're third and seven against a defense for North Dakota State that's going to get revved up right here. Four man rush. Ross's pass incomplete, intended for blanks. There was some contact there as well. Jordan Champion on the coverage. Jordan Champion was actually on the coverage in the slot. And the route by Terrell Blanks, and he, Blanks just came out of his cut wrong and was stumbling, and that ball went to the ground. Huge missed opportunity and unfortunate turn of events if you're close to Carolina offensively. D.J. Smith lets the punt bounce. And now he covers it up. Risky move there. And North Dakota State has dodged a couple of bullets here early. The Bison will have the ball for the first time in the second half after the break. Twenty-four twenty, North Dakota State leading Coastal Carolina quarterfinals of the FCS playoffs. Key play on that last drive for Coastal. A call on the field was reversed. This was initially ruled a catch. You need indisputable video evidence to overturn the call. I did not see indisputable video evidence, yet the call was overturned. Yeah, I don't agree with it either, and I didn't see that indisputable video evidence. That is the standard, remember that, and I, I just didn't see it right there. I am with you, partner. I don't agree with that being overturned. They're saying upstairs it was indisputable. If you're Coastal, you're Joe Moglia, you're looking at the nature of this game. It may come down to one or two plays. You would hate to see it decided by an official's call. And I think that was a kind of a quintessential let it stand. There wasn't enough information one way or the other. Absolutely. So on the field, called originally, needs to win out. Play action. Wentz rolling to his right. On the run. And he completes it on that far sideline. It's Kerry Woods. And for Woods, his fourth catch. He stepped up with Zach Bra, North Dakota State's top receiver, out with a hamstring injury. We saw North Dakota State do this in the first half as well. The play action off their run game. And then Wentz boots it outside. And Woods just runs like he's on a go route and then breaks it off right back down the sideline. Well executed by North Dakota State. The Bison racked up more than 300 yards of total offense in that first half. 
This man was a big part of it. John Crockett sheds a tackler, has some space. Crockett down the sideline and finally tackled from behind by the safety, Pernell Williams. Well, once again, we see Andrew Bonnet, the tight end slash fullback, right at the center of everything. He came over, he set the edge, you pull a couple of offensive linemen, and then Crockett just gets up in behind him. Very well executed, and what North Dakota State is so good at is sorting things out on the move up front. Chase Morlock. A native of Moorhead, Minnesota, right across the river from Fargo. And he picks up two. North Dakota State gets to their bread and butter in so many different ways. They want to run the ball in a physical nature, but they get to it in a variety of ways. And double tight ends, a fullback, they pull offensive linemen, but the goal is still the same to just outman you at the line of scrimmage. 200 plus rush yards now for the Bison. Crockett up the middle. And he plows ahead to the 15 yard line, a gain of four. And what you see at the line of scrimmage from Carson Wentz is he waves his hands kind of in a safe signal, as you would see in baseball. And what he's saying is it's kind of kill, kill, kill. We're staying with this play. No more movement. We're running it from this formation as is because he likes the look. If he doesn't like the look, he'll get into something else. Alert here in the two-man passing game to the close side. Crockett once again. He's to the 10-yard line. And he's going to be short of a bison first down. It's going to be fourth and inches. The home crowd here certainly didn't like the spot, but I think it was actually pretty decent. And remember, and I think it's going to be the spot of the football can be reviewed as well, and it's going to review. I think the spot is under review as we speak. John Crockett's backside came down first, and then it's where the ball is when that happens. And the crowd here certainly felt like he had gotten the ball to that 10-yard line, which is the line to gain in this case. Now, where's the ball when he goes down? Again, I'm not sure there's enough there to overturn it, but past his prologue who knows yeah I think that's actually a pretty decent spot I think as his backside came down the ball was about six inches short of that 10 yard line I think that was a pretty accurate spot by this officiating crew having said that they'll probably convert for a first down here after further review, the ruling on the field stands. Fourth down. I think if you're North Dakota State, Chris Kleiman, the head coach we see right there, it, this is about attitude. Coastal Carolina could not answer their opening drive of this first half, and North Dakota State desperately wants to do that right here. Answering today, the Bison four out of eight on fourth down. Remember, you have come out here and line up and go for it. 6'6", 230-pound quarterback. Wentz will sneak it across. He gets the push, and he gets a North Dakota State first down. First and goal. The North Dakota State won this battle on the line of scrimmage. You have a massive quarterback, but you had a really good push from the center, both guard position, kind of the flying wedge up inside, and... North Dakota State converts with their bread and butter, which is, I'm going to hit you harder than you can hit me. That unit has come a long way. Only one starter back from last season. Bonnet in motion. Here's Crockett looking for room. Ambushed in the backfield. And down he goes, taken down at the 13-yard line. Good pursuit that time by Roderick Holder. 
And a good adjustment by Coastal Carolina. We see Bonnet once again win in motion. And this time, Wentz, the quarterback, waved him back to the other side because they felt like they had a better running play to the right. Coastal Carolina adjusted late and blew that play off. It's a big stand right now for this Coastal Carolina defense trying to keep it to a one score game. Out of the double tight end look. Crockett tripped up initially and then brought down by Williams after a gain of two. So third and goal now for North Dakota State. A good penetration by number 40 right there on your screen, Brett Johnson. That's what you have to do. You have to create penetration and move the line of scrimmage before Crockett can get rolling downhill. Very difficult to do against the power nature of this run scheme for North Dakota State where they pull multiple offensive linemen and relocate about 600 pounds to a different place on the line of scrimmage. Frazier in to spell Crockett. On third and goal. Wentz looking. Throwing in traffic. Incomplete and now a late flag. Pass was intended for Albers. And let's see what the penalty is. Brent Johnson made a good play on the run play that play before this time he's going to get past interference I believe interference number 40 of the defense the ball will be placed at the two yard line automatic first down the thing is that Brent Johnson really didn't have to do that he tugged at the jersey late right there you can see his elbows is coming out of his break but what Johnson has to realize is he has help over the top that was not needed you have to trust the fact that your secondary player is going to be there where he's supposed to to offer help. Morlock, the deep back. Play action, naked bootleg, Wentz has an angle. Touchdown, Bison. Carolina fully understands to stop the run game in North Dakota State. They have to sell out. Look at all the bodies up inside. And then Wentz is a tremendous athlete, but he's also a fast guy. He's supposed to have legitimate four or five speed at 6'6. To take nothing away from what Brock Jensen accomplished here in Fargo, Jensen, the winningest quarterback in FCS history. But all the coaches say when it comes to the measurables, they haven't seen one like Carson Wentz. 6'6", six, six, Junior runs it in, and it's a two-score game. College hoops this afternoon on ESPN. Utah and Kansas today at 3.15 Eastern, a matchup of a pair of ranked teams. Get to see Perry Ellis, Wayne Selden, and the Jayhawks. Third-ranked Arizona taking on Michigan. That's at 5.15 Eastern on ESPN, a Holiday Hoops doubleheader. North Dakota State looking to get back to the semifinals. The Bison, the three-time defending champs. I think that guy has your suit on, Anish. I think I've seen you in that before. I've got one just like that. And I'm not talking about the guy with the suit, the one standing next to him. Yeah, I think I've seen you with that hat on. I'm talking about the yellow suit, though. Pooch kick. They're trying to kick it away from Devin Brown. Oshamar Abercrombie brings it out across the 40. Good starting field position for Coastal Carolina. And we go to the studio in Adnan. You are a dashing man, Anish. That I cannot deny. Meantime, Sam Houston State and Villanova over on ESPN3. This is Chris Poloni pressed into duty and using his legs for the touchdown. Later on, though, it'll be Jared Johnson to Gerald Thomas for Sam Houston State. Good game going on right now in the other FCS Championship quarterfinal action, 14 to 13 in the second quarter. Anish, back to you. Thank you, Adnan. D'Angelo Henderson to the 44-yard line. The Villanova Sam Houston State winner. We'll get the winner of our game, Illinois State Eastern Washington on the red, red turf in Cheney, the Inferno. Winner of that game gets New Hampshire. The Wildcats, the top seed, moved on to the semifinals with a win last night against Chattanooga. 
Time for Ross. Over the middle, he's got John Israel. He's their big play threat. Israel takes it all the way to the 31-yard line, finally brought down by Christian Dudzik. And this all started with great pass protection. Ross had a lot of time to throw that football in. Two high safeties, man-to-man -man coverage underneath, and Israel finally just shook loose and got open for his quarterback, Alex Ross. Perfect balance for the Chanticleers. 122 passing yards, 122 on the ground. Ross will improvise. And he slides down at the 26-yard line. Take a look at this play once again, Anish. There was great time in the backfield. It took Israel a lot of time to shake loose from Trey Dempsey. All about pass protection afforded that completion down the field. They needed that much time. Israel had a 46-yard touchdown catch against North Dakota State in the quarterfinals last year. Here's the fly sweep. Devin Brown tripped up a gain of two. We see Dedzik on that tackle and then stayed down. He started to get up and then went right back down to the ground. These safeties for North Dakota State have about, a, I think it's 113 games between them in terms of starts. Immense talent, and we saw Dudzik on this play running the alley on that fly sweep, and I think he got a knee right in the lower rib cage. it looked like to me. Defensive coordinator Matt Enns was telling us yesterday the safeties, Dudzik and Hegel, when the coaches on the defensive side want to try something new or want to put something into the game plan, the safeties are the litmus test. If the safeties who've started 100-plus games together, if they don't get it, nobody will. Exactly. And that plan gets scrapped. Yeah, that's good thinking. We see does it get up right there. But that talent allows for some flexibility schematically on the defensive side for North Dakota State because you know that does it and Hegel are going to be in the right place and carrying out their assignment well. Coastal two out of eight on third down. Henderson up the middle and east of the 20 yard line. He's got enough for a first down. Alex Ross has not thrown an interception in his last 207 attempts. North Dakota State is plus 11 turnover takeaway this year, and they are certainly due to make something happen there. Coastal Carolina in the process of an important answer offensively. Henderson inside the 20, got a couple. Second down. I'll tell you what's been impressive about Henderson. Whoever hits him first is not the guy who usually brings him down. A lot of yards after contact at 5'8", 200 pounds. That's pretty impressive. He actually needs to learn to run behind his pads a little bit more. That low center of gravity could work well for him, but sometimes he is loose in ball security because he doesn't protect himself behind his pads. Anderson a couple of yards away from his ninth 100-yard rushing game of the season. Won't happen on this play. That's caught by Bruce Mapp. Tackled about three yards shy of the first down marker. And with that catch, Mapp now sets the single season school record for receptions. Remember, Mapp came into this game slowed because of an ankle injury. And I was watching him in warm ups, you know. He wasn't moving too well, but he's a gamer. He's showed up here today. Third down, we talk about finishing drives. It's going to get loud. And he's got a first down for Coastal Carolina, a gain of eight. First and goal, Chanticleers. North Dakota State was anticipating Ron. They didn't have any safeties deep, leaving C.J. Smith one-on-one -on -one with Matt. Going quickly, Henderson lunging. No signal. Second and goal. He got close. Got to watch out sometimes. The ball sometimes can pop loose. Yeah, that ball was a little loose right there, but I think that up-tempo 
caught North Dakota State a little off guard defensively. Anderson has had a touchdown in every game this season. And a whistle before the play. The ruling on the previous play is the player was down by rule short of the goal line. That play is under review. You see Henderson on the play before he goes Superman and gets his hand down and his foot down. And does he get the ball over the end zone? Ruling on the field was not a touchdown. So again, you need indisputable video evidence. And I think that's a good that call. call. It's where the ball is when once again his backside comes down. I think that's correctly spotted at about the six inch yard line. Once again, very good job by the officials on the field real time. That ball gets a little loose right there. If the defender coming in could have put his helmet on it, he would have caught that one up. We said this at the start of the second half. It's been impressive how coastal Carolina has been able to withstand the haymakers from the bison. You think about how this half started. Coastal's got the ball. It looks like they've got a big play downfield. It's After overturned. You, the ruling on the field is confirmed short of the goal line. Second down. There was a key play on the far sideline overturned earlier in this third quarter. Coastal ends up punting North Dakota State. Takes it downfield, launches it in for a touchdown, and the shot to clears. Down two scores, a drive of their own. They've got the ball here on about the six inch line. Ross, the toss to Henderson, and a flag. Yeah, I think there was movement on the left side of the line of scrimmage. Prior to the snap, false start offense, number 73. Five yards, remain second down. It's the second time Coastal's been this close and there's been a false start. Yeah, you can see 73, Chad Hamilton clear out on the end, move just a little bit, and that's all it takes. The chalk, another one up to the crowd noise here. Those guys furthest away from the quarterback on the line of scrimmage literally can't hear anything. We saw a false start penalty down here before the half as well. Abercrombie inside the five yard line. Third and goal now for the shot to clears. All right, Kelly, is this four down territory for Coastal? I don't know that it has to be four down territory because of that penalty. I think you need desperately to get points on the board. Of course, you want to get it into the end zone. But depending on what happens on this play, I think you, if you don't get it into the end zone, you at least need three. Thirty-second charge timeout. This will now be a media timeout. Correction. 30-second charge timeout. So Joe Moglia wants to go over strategy on third and goal. 326 to go in the Please third read. quarter. Tonight, find out who will be forever linked to college football's highest individual honor. It's the presentation of the Heisman Trophy brought to you by Nissan. 8 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. The three finalists, Alabama's Amari Cooper, Wisconsin's Melvin Gordon, and a favorite going in, Oregon's Marcus Mariota, who has a 19 to 1 touchdown to interception ratio this season. That's not bad. I think that's Heisman worthy. Did you ever put up those kind of numbers? No. High school? No. No. The numbers they put up this day and age weren't seen back in my day. That matchup with C.J. Smith and Map up top. Ross on third and goal. He'll try to run it. Dives into the end zone and Coastal answers again. Second touchdown of the game for quarterback Alex Ross. North Dakota State had every answer defensively except for the quarterback. 
the plus one run game and that wasn't by design but the effort to get in the end zone in the end and that's the one player that North Dakota State did not have defended. And Coastal is going to go for two to try to make this a three point game. The shot to clears have converted on their last five two point conversions. See Map with that gimpy ankle. Bison nearly jumped. If it's contact, it's encroachment. Offside. Defense number five. He was unabated to the quarterback. Half the distance to the goal. One on time down. That's Jordan Champion. Yeah, he actually corner. was real early, but has the opportunity to get back. But when they rule him unabated to the quarterback, then they blow the play dead. Map is down right there. We talked about him being slowed by an ankle injury coming into this game. This looks more like a lower back type situation. Well, you saw him going in motion prior to that offsides penalty, and he looked like he was hobbling, but you probably chalk that up to the ankle. Let's take one more look. Yeah, when he started into that motion, it looked like he kind of had a, a catch in his giddy up right there. And he's been their go to receiver throwing it up high for Alex Ross has been a comfort zone for the quarterback. Yeah, that does not look 81 good. yards for map and that does not look good. You're right. The coach has told us, you know, he's a guy you throw him the ball. He doesn't drop it. He's a sure thing. Yeah, great hands, great route coming into this game. This is phenomenal. He was targeted was Bruce map 67 times had 67 catches coming into this game. That is impressive. Great hands, great route, slowed by an ankle, and it's something more than an ankle right now. And he is Coastal Carolina's best wide receiver. North Dakota State playing without its best wide receiver today, Zach Vra, out with a hamstring injury, and now it's mapped down for the shot to clears. And previous to this, I really didn't see Bruce Mapp take a big hit. And now they're bringing the cart out on the field. So you hope Bruce Mapp is okay. Sophomore out of Philadelphia. We'll step aside. 3.29 to go in the third quarter. Two point conversion coming up for Coastal. The Bison steamrolled to a title last year. It has not been easy in the playoffs this year. South Dakota State took North Dakota State to the wire last week here at the Fargo Dome in Coastal Carolina. Not going away. The shot to clears lining up for a two point conversion to make this a three point game. Andre Johnson in the backfield with Ross. They'll shift the line. Ross in trouble. Throws it up in the end zone. Incomplete. Cody Craig and Craig White, the tight ends, were in the area code. The old swinging gate, just trying to get North Dakota State to give up something via alignment, but North Dakota State is impeccably well coached, and that did not work at all. What'd you make of the play call? I didn't like it. I, I didn't mind going for two, obviously, right here. One doesn't do you that much good down by five. But I don't like the choice. There have been so many good things happening, especially with Alex Ross being a viable runner of the football. Well, you also have to remember it was half the distance from the original spot. There was an offsides penalty exactly. against North Dakota State. Coastal has had some success running the football against the buys in front. Yeah, I think you can spread it out in that situation and really give Alex Ross a run pass option to the edge. I don't think you always have to overthink it as a play caller and and try to just fool somebody. Sometimes just out executing the other team works just fine. This has been one of the best offensive seasons in school history for Coastal Carolina. They ranked top 15 nationally 
in scoring offense and scoring defense. And to put up 26 against this North Dakota State D. That's no small feat. Most points the Bison have given up all season. With Kelly Stoffer and East Schroff, if you're just joining us, some key plays here in this third quarter. Devin Brown makes this catch along the sideline, ruled a catch on the field, later overturned. Despite the lack of indisputable video evidence, North Dakota State, after a punt, scores on a Carson Wentz touchdown. Alex Ross, his second rushing touchdown of the game for Coastal Carolina. Two-point conversion, no good, and that's where we stand, 31-26. John Crockett on first down. Stood up right at the line. Johnson leading the charge. We go to Adnan. All right, Anise, just a friendly reminder, some great college basketball coming up. Utah has won six straight. They're facing a Kansas team that has won its last three versus tough teams despite shooting only 38.7% from the field. That's coming up next on ESPN just about 50 minutes from now. Anise, back to you. All right, we look forward to it. Wentz fakes the handoff, finds Morlock in the flat, and he picks up a first down, a gain of 10, tackled by Denzel Rice. North Dakota State really likes to do this. They'll go trips to one side with the tight end on the close side, in this case into the boundary. Tight end Vodlin went to the corner, and then the fullback actually, in this case Morlock, comes out of the fullback position and sneaks out into the flat. You know who's been awfully quiet for Coastal Carolina on defense? Quinn Backus. The middle linebacker, All-American, three-time conference defensive player of the year. Wentz on the move. Stumbles ahead to the 36-yard line for a gain of five. Back is also a finalist for the Buck Buchanan Award. That goes to the best defensive player in the FCS, number 30 in white. Had a big game last week against Richmond. And you look at his career numbers, he's also been a disruptor. Eight career interceptions, nine career forced fumbles, including six forced fumbles this season. Play action. Wentz launches one downfield. And he overthrew his intended target, John Crockett. The North Dakota State coaches told us we'd see Crockett on some vertical routes. Without Zach Ra, they really don't have a vertical threat. Yeah, that was the first time we've actually seen it. Play action pass in the backfield. And then the post route outside. That's a running back in Crockett. Matched up on Rice. I like that matchup if I'm Coastal Carolina, but that was all about trying to fool somebody up front and then get Crockett in behind him. Big third down. Five to go. Here's the blitz. Wentz, quick release. It's incomplete. He wanted Woods. Blanket coverage that time. Cameron Summers and C.J. Thompson. And North Dakota State will have to punt, so Coastal will get the ball back. That was a decent... Decision by Wentz, but just a bad throw. He had Woods outside, but he had Ergandowski inside as well. Both were open, and he just didn't throw the ball accurately. Zach Silverberg waiting, and Ben LeCompte booms this one. And it hits out of bounds. The market at the five-yard line, a 59-yard punt. And that was 59 on the fly, partner. That was a dime on the sidelines, and you saw it explode off of LeCompte's foot. We were told that he was suffering from a quad injury a little bit and didn't know how effective, but not only was that a moonshot, but it was a very accurate moonshot at that. LeCompte, a first-team all-conference putter, averaging 45 yards a punt coming into today. That's second in the FCS. It is getting noisy in here as we speak.
Ross to throw. Here's the pressure. Ross going downfield for Israel. Comes back to the ball and he holds on to it. What a gutsy play call. Play action pass and you get Israel matched up on champion. One on one outside and Coastal Carolina takes a chance and they're rewarded for it. 48-yard gain in Coastal, now in North Dakota State Territory. Shovel, it's Henderson. Changes directions, Henderson has room. Bumped out of bounds inside the 20-yard line by Colton Hegel. Another big gain, that one for 32. Well, this is Henderson's strong suit, the lateral movement. There wasn't a lot at the point of attack to the left, and it's the jump outside. Good running backs have the vision to see where the softness is and the quick feet to get there, and Henderson displayed both right there on that play. Another red zone chance for Coastal as we come on the final ticks. How about this answer? Well, they've had an answer all game long. Eludes the pursuit. Has a running lane. He'll throw it. It's complete. It's Abercrombie inside the five. First and goal, Coastal Carolina. There is an injured North Dakota State player back at the 20-yard line. It's the defensive tackle, Brian Schatz. But the Shanta clears with a chance to take the lead on the road when we begin the fourth quarter. What is a Chanticleer? It is a rooster who rules the barnyard with cunning and wit. There's a story in Chaucer's Canterbury Tales. The Chanticleer and the fox. Well, these Chanticleers, they've done it with a lot of brute force. They've done it with some wit as well today. This drive, though, has summed up Coastal Carolina today. Started at their own five-yard line, three plays, 93 yards later. The shot to clear inside the North Dakota State five with a chance to take the lead for the first time today. This is Henderson. He's in for a touchdown, and Coastal Carolina has its first lead of the game. Henderson once again watch the contact initially before the end zone and then it's the yards after contact we've seen that so many times from number 31 D'Angelo Henderson and there it was on display once again Henderson has scored a touchdown in every game this season and they may look at this one the previous play a touchdown is under review We said it at the beginning of the third quarter, the resiliency of Coastal Carolina. Every time North Dakota State fires off a haymaker, Coastal able to respond. And we can see that Henderson reached for the goal line late. The question is, where is the ball when the knee is down for the first time? The knee is in there somewhere, but I'm not so sure it ever goes down before Henderson extends that football across the plane. That knee right there. does not appear to be down. The knee got within about an inch, but I don't think it ever touched before Henderson stretched over that goal line. I think that's going to be confirmed. Again, indisputable video evidence is needed to overturn a call, although we've had one call that was overturned earlier in this game without indisputable video evidence. Once again, we see a very important play, certainly in this game, and... It's being looked at further. Does the knee go down? It doesn't appear to be down, certainly right there. And then it's extension into the end zone with the football with the right hand. That's why you do all those push-ups. That's strength in those no forearms. Kidding. You're about to go down. Your body weight 
propped up by that left forearm. That was impressive. That answer by Coastal Carolina was impressive. The ruling on the play of a touchdown stands. Well, we certainly agree with that up here, don't we, partner? No issue with that one. 32-31, Coastal with the lead. They're going for two. Trey Dempsey trying to get onto the field late. He's able to do so. He subs in for Nick DeLuca. This to make it a three-point game. The tight end, Wyke in motion. Ross and Joe, the ball is tipped, and it's incomplete intended for Alex Sweet. Kyle Emanuel, the Missouri Valley Conference's Defensive Player of the Year, tipped the ball. But Coastal Carolina on a drive that started from its own five-yard line. A couple of big plays through the pass game and the run game, capped by this Henderson touchdown, and the shot to clears lead. This might come down to whoever has the ball last. Coastal Carolina has the three-time defending champions on the rope. Shanta clears up one early fourth quarter. North Dakota State has won 21 in a row here at the Fargo Dome. The last home loss, October 13, 2012, against Indiana State. The Bison have won 13 straight playoff games, including 12 in a row at home. Coastal this season, 7-0 on the road. The shot to clears leading for the first time this afternoon as North Dakota State will bring the kick to the 25-yard line. Joe Moglia told us this week the key for his team would be handling the Fargo Dome handling the noise, handling the crowd, and they're banking on experience because last year Coastal couldn't do it. They came in here for a quarterfinal game, lost 48-14. They were out of it early, never really recovered. But let's not underestimate the experience quotient. Yeah, and the question was the ability to apply that experience coming into this game, and certainly Coastal Carolina has done that thus far. On first down, John Crockett looked like he was going to be tackled right at the line, swims ahead for a couple. The NCAA continues with FCS semifinal games on December 19th and the 20th. All games can be seen on the Watch ESPN app and ESPN3. For more info, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 89 NCAA championships. Crockett tripped up in the backfield and then devoured by Pernell Williams for a loss of four. This play was really made by Brett Johnson, number 40. The linebacker, watch him slice through the middle, gets out to the edge, and then finishes the play, or at least keeps Crockett intact until he can get help. That's something to the edge that Coastal Carolina was not doing well in the first half. North Dakota State in a third and long. Coastal showing blitz. Woods in motion. Shot to clears back off. Wentz in trouble. Takes a big hit. Knocked out at the 31-yard line, short of the first down. So a fourth down coming up for North Dakota State. And Ben LeCompte and the punting team will come back out of the field. And Wentz is a big dude at quarterback at 6'6", 230, but this is Brett Johnson, the linebacker. And it is a face-to-face -face collision. And I think Wentz got the worst of that, but he did get up. LeCompte's last punt, 59 yards, and went out of bounds of the five-yard line. good kick and chases Silverberg back. He'll make the catch inside his own 10-yard line. And Zach Silverberg driven out near the 20. Coastal Carolina looking to get to the semifinals.
for the first time in school history. Joe Moglia, a Wall Street mogul, has navigated through Bulls, Bears. Can he get through the Bison? Coastal Carolina started 11-0, lost their regular season finale to Liberty. That cost the shot to clear as a chance at a top four seed. But here they are with the ball and a one-point lead in the fourth quarter and a chance to knock off the three-time defending champion, North Dakota State Bison. North Dakota State just hasn't had many answers recently in this game defensively. They certainly need to come up with something right here. Henderson tackled by a mob of yellow. It's been a balanced offensive effort by the shots. That's who Coastal Carolina is. They want to be a balanced team. They have been all year. It's not about the way you get there. It's about the production, the result, the yards, and how you score points. And so far, so good for Coastal Carolina. Ross in trouble. Gets away from Emmanuel. Throws across his body and it's tipped incomplete. Jordan Champion got his fingers on it. Dangerous pass that time from the junior quarterback. Very dangerous. And what North Dakota State did defensively is they spun out of their too high safety look in that Tampa 2 coverage and they spun into what they call 1 3. High safety in the middle, man to man underneath. And it caught Coastal Carolina off guard a bit. for the Bison here on third down. And I think this is all about coverage for North Dakota State defensively. Ross in trouble, ran into his own man, and he's engulfed back at the 11-yard line. Greg Minard and Brad Ambrosius. North Dakota State rarely comes out of their four-man front. This time they went three-man front, and they went max coverage on the back end with eight people dropping into a zone. And Ross, Alex Ross, the quarterback, just simply didn't know what to do with it. And the result was a big play defensively. Austin Kane, rugby-style punt. C.J. Smith touched it, recovers it. And he's tackled at the 31-yard line, a 54-yard punt to flip field position. And North Dakota State's backup quarterback, Cole Davis, wearing pivot head glasses to give us a point of view perspective on what he was seeing coming out of the tunnel. Great entrance here by the Bison at the Fargo Dome. And now, okay, I think we're getting a little dizzy. North Dakota State wearing its alternate yellow jerseys today. If you're into superstitions, the Bison 17-0 when wearing the yellow. But down by a point, 11-11 to go here on 12-13-14. Wentz chased, gets away from Hollenhorst. Sets, throws over the middle, receiver open. The All-American linebacker was on the coverage. And Morlock was actually the receiver coming in to get that football. He was well out of the play. I could see him wide open behind the quarterback, Winston, was rolling. Wentz sees him late. Interference, number 30 of the defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. And good things happen if you throw the ball up like that sometimes. The defender did not look back for the football. That's why he gets called for the pass interference. All right, but the offensive player was coming over the back of the defensive player. Offensive player has the right to go to the football. The defensive player does not have the right to run through the receiver without seeing the football. That's why the play was called the way it was. Crockett in the backfield, first and 10 ball on the 46. Wentz will keep it 6'6", 230. 
across midfield for a gain of six. That's exactly what I wanted to say. We we expected actually, and we're told that we'd see more quarterback design runs in this game than they have all year. We haven't seen a whole lot of it. I would expect more of Carson Wentz running the football on this drive as necessary. Two tight end look. Crockett looking for some room, breaks the tackle, tries to get the edge, and he's ankle tackled. Amir Sanders held him up. Leroy Cummings finished him off. And a good effort early by Crockett, but a bad decision late. If he just continues to the edge right there, he at least gets enough for the first down and to convert and move the chains. That was a bad decision, not being aware of what your team needs right now, which is simply to convert and possess the football. Crockett needs about 20 more yards to set the school's single season rushing record. Crockett gets the call on third and short, running off tackle. Using the stiff ball, he's got Lane, and John Crockett gets the record and puts the Bison back on top. Well, the answer of a champion looks something like this right here, Anish. Once again, Coastal Carolina doesn't defend the edge well, and Crockett makes a peg. North Dakota State will go for two. The Bison try to make this a seven-point game. King Frazier in the backfield. Wentz in trouble. Runs right up the middle. Two-point conversion good. And it's the Bison by seven. It is so hard for opponents to win in this building. John Crockett, his second long touchdown of the game. And North Dakota State on top. 39-32. John Crockett has set North Dakota State's single season rushing record. Broke Lamar Gordon's mark of 1,723 yards. And today, Crockett and the FCS quarterfinals, a career high 221 yards. He has been the workhorse this season. No Sam O'Jury to split carries with. This is his third straight 1,000-yard season. And he's got two long touchdown runs in this game. The first score of the game, and the one to put the Bison on top. This one lands in bounds and then goes out of bounds. That's going to be a penalty on North Dakota State, and Coastal will get it at the 35-yard line. Free kick out of bounds on the kicking team. The ball will be placed at the 35-yard line, first down. Let's go to the studio and Adnan Burke. Anish, thank you. Just a friendly reminder coming up. Perry Ellison, a Wooden Award preseason candidate. He and 7-1 and one Kansas facing a Utah team that has attempted to topple a top-10 team for the second time in three games. If the game you're watching goes late, this game will start on ESPN News. More Chaucer references from Anish now. <laughs> he listens. That's what I like about him. Alex Ross in trouble. Scampers out of bounds inside the 40-yard line. A gain of five. Kelly, all game long, Coastal Carolina has been able to respond. It's been the most impressive thing about the shot to clears today in this environment. And in this environment against the three-time defending champions, you have to continue to answer until there's no more time on the clock. And that's certainly required of Coastal Carolina right here. There's that run pass option. Lanks upended at the 40-yard line. Only a yard. It'll bring up third down for Coastal. 
Obviously a huge third down play right here and North Dakota State has changed things up on the back end. It's caught Alex Ross off guard a little bit. They've rotated out of their two high safeties into more of a one three with man underneath type coverage. We'll see what they do right here. Ross in trouble. Gets rid of it. He's got the tight end Wyke. And Wyke is tackled shy of the 45. It'll bring up fourth down. And let's see if Joe Moglia decides to go for it. Something you have to take into consideration. If you give the ball back to North Dakota State and the Bison go on one of their vintage drives, you may not get the ball back. Yeah, that's a great point. And Joe Mowgli is going to punt this football, and that's a good decision. It's not like he's not used to making tough decisions in the business world, but they're also very calculated, and this is a good decision right here at the end of the day. He's going to bank on his defense. Fake punt! And Coastal gets the first down. How about Joe Moglia? Risk or reward? He goes with risk, and he's rewarded. No doubt about it. And it was well executed, snapping directly to the up back. The other two up backs lead up inside, and North Dakota State was caught off guard a little bit. But once again, I like the calculated nature of what they did right there on that fake punt. Oglia told us one of his underlying philosophies is to maximize efficiency. Ross flushed out of the pocket. He's going to run for it. Across the 45-yard line, marked out of bounds at the 43 of North Dakota State, an 11-yard gain. Coastal Carolina, we're being told, trending across the United States on Twitter. The Shanta clears with a chance to take down the three-time defending champion, North Dakota State Bison. Bad snap. Ross recovers under pressure. Gets rid of it, and it's incomplete. That could have been disastrous for the Shanta clears. North Dakota State is arguing that this did not go past the line of scrimmage, which outside the pocket, you can throw it away as long as it does. But actually, I think there was a receiver in the area regardless. So I, th I think Alex Wheat was an eligible receiver. It sealed right over his head. But what a tremendous athletic play by Alex Ross right there. That should have been and could have been a disaster, and he pulls it out of the fire. They give us to Henderson. Shots got to him in the backfield, and it's third and long. The decibel level is cranking up once again. Coastal Carolina has handled it well as we go third and 12 right here. Last time, North Dakota State rushed three, dropped eight. And Alex Ross, the quarterback, could not solve the equation. Three-man rush again. Ross throws through the fingertips of Alex Sweet, and it's fourth down and 12. Remember, Coastal Carolina now without Bruce Mapp, their top receiver, carted off the field earlier in this second half. As Coastal Carolina comes on to apparently punt the football, but you're right, that last pass would have gone to map if he was in the game. That's exactly the way that Alex Ross uses Bruce Mapp. No fake punt this time. Austin Kane, there's that rugby-style punt. going to be a touchback. The ball crossed the plane of the end zone. What if I told you a hurricane was coming? In 2001, the University of Miami unleashed a ferocious storm of talent and swagger upon college football. What if I told you you can't stop a hurricane, but you know it has to end? ESPN Films presents a 30 for 30 film brought to you by Infinity. It's the U part two tonight at 9 Eastern on ESPN.
with Kelly Stauffer and Ishrop FCS quarterfinals three time defending champ North Dakota State up by seven with the football the Bison trying to get back to the semifinals they'll play either Villanova or Sam Houston State if they can get there Coastal trying to get to the semis for the first time in school history Carson Wentz quarterback keeper brought down by Williams after a 15 yard gain. Anish, this game is a game of inches, and Coastal Carolina had an opportunity to make a huge play. This ball could have been down within inside or inside the one-yard line. Instead, it goes into the end zone. The little things make a difference, and if you have to come into a hostile environment to dethrone the three-time defending champions, you have to make plays like that. And Abijan here, they're going to bleed the clock, take their time, their perfect world. Coastal doesn't see the football again. More lock to the 43 yard line for a gain of seven. North Dakota State certainly wants to maintain possession right here, but it's interesting. We've seen Carson Wentz in the quarterback run game here in this fourth quarter. More than we have really all season for them. Design quarterback runs, adding one more run fit to that gap defense for North or Coastal Carolina. And that's been vital for North Dakota State in their one loss to Northern Iowa. Wentz played with an ankle injury. And that loss snapped the Bison's 33 game win streak in FCS record. Crockett, a lot of work. He gets just enough for a first down. And the Bison will move the chains. Less than five minutes to play. Here in regulation, North Dakota State nursing a seven-point lead. At what point does Joe Mowgli have to start thinking about using his timeouts? Probably during this next series, this next change of events, and actually you're going to see the clock stop. Coastal Carolina had a player that went down that already started to the sideline. It's actually Sanders, I believe it's Sanders that safety he got up started to the sidelines and went down and the fans here in the Fargo Dome did not appreciate the appearance of a flock. Meanwhile in a game you can see on ESPN three Sam Houston State leading Villanova Villanova the sixth seed playing without quarterback John Robertson Robertson is one of three finalists for the Peyton Award which will be given out Monday. That's the Heisman of the FCS. Of course the Heisman will be given out tonight at 8 p.m. on ESPN. And the Sam Houston State Villanova winner will get the winner of the game you're watching. It's been a fun one, Kelly. It really has. And I, I think we have more to come, but this is quintessential closing time for North Dakota State. This is what their program really is built for, is to be able to close out games just like they're in the midst of right here. North Dakota State averages better than 40 rushes per game. They're right at 40. 24 of those carries for John Crockett, who has a career high 224 yards. 25 carries for Crockett. And he pushes across midfield to the Coastal Carolina 49. He is a true workhorse in this day and age. 300 plus carries this season, which is a school single season record. North Dakota State runs the ball up the middle, which right in here is kind of the softening mechanism to get out here to the edges. And that's what you see right there. The damage is done on the perimeter, but that brute force is used up the middle to soften that defense and slow him down just one step, and then Crockett gets to the edge. King Frazier spells Crockett on second and five. The give to the fullback, Bonnet! He busts free! Bonnet inside the 35 to the 34-yard line, a gain of 15, and a first down for the Bison. Well, Bonnet from his fullback position has mainly been a battering ram. You can see 46 up inside, and Coastal Carolina defensively was literally running right by the fullback. They didn't know 46 had the ball. Great time to use that play. I think it's the second time we've seen it this evening. They had to have been saving Bonnet coming into the game on the season. 
one carry for negative four yards. He's carried it twice so far today. On that, including that last exact one for 15. Exact same play. We've seen that play twice now. You're right. Fly sweep. That's the freshman Urzendowski taken down at the 31, a gain of three. Clock continues to run. Less than 2.30 to play in regulation. Coastal with two timeouts. And Joe Mowgli is probably looking for a second down stop here, and then he'll probably use a timeout. Yeah, that's exactly right. I think you'll see the first timeout, or actually it'll be their second timeout being used after this play if North Dakota State does not convert. We saw Coastal go 93 yards on three plays earlier in this half. So they can move the ball quickly. They just have to get the ball back. Wentz will keep it. And he's tackled by Quinn Backus, the All-American. It's a loss of a yard. It's third down. And the shot to clear. Stop the clock with a minute 48 to go. If you're just joining us, North Dakota State, the three-time defending champion, led 24-20 at the half. Carson Wentz gave the Bison a two-score lead. But Coastal Carolina all game has been able to respond in hostile conditions. Alex Ross a touchdown run. D'Angelo Henderson a touchdown to give the shot to clears a lead. And then John Crockett, a 48-yard TD. The two-point conversion was good. And that's where we stand right now, 39-32. The Bison trying to get to the semifinals. Coastal has never been to the semifinals. Their season ended in the quarters a year ago in this very building. And Joe Moglia understood that his team had to do so many things right to come in here and win this game, but they really, really felt good about their chances. And one was handling the noise, two was the physical run game that Coastal Carolina has displayed here today has worked well for them also. They've gone toe to toe with the Bison. On third down, here's Crockett, and he's tackled for a loss. It'll bring up fourth down, and Coastal will have a chance to get the ball back, but North Dakota State now with a decision. Yeah, that will be the interesting thing here, Anish. You're right, because as far as down in distance and place on the field. This would be a it's mammoth a shot goal. for a field goal. They've got a good kicker in Adam Keller. His long is 50. He's made nine straight, including one today. He actually needs one more made field goal to tie the FCS single season record. But again, look where the ball is. Outside the 30 yard line, it's a Almost a 50 yarder yeah, from here. Probably a and 48 miss, yarder. It's in his range, but if you miss, Coastal's got a short field. If you make it, there's a good chance you put the game away. Yeah, and sometimes long field goals get blocked because they have to get a little more into them, and typically they come off a little bit lower than shorter field goals. 49 yarder. Keller with four toes on his kicking foot. The snap, the hold, the kick is up. So Coastal Carolina gets the ball back. A buck 37 to go in regulation. The shot to clears with a chance. And Keller did not hit that well. That was kind of rolling to the left from the beginning. Coastal Carolina has yet another opportunity to answer. Prior to that kick, Keller had been 9 of 11 on field goals of 40 or more yards this season. Kyle Emanuel right here, we haven't heard a lot from. 16 and a half sacks coming into the day. This is showtime for number 53. And for Coastal Carolina, this is a program-defining drive. Ross over the middle, it's dropped. Tyrell Blanks could not hold on. Coastal 7-0 on the road this season. The Bison 21 straight wins here at the Fargo Dome. Winner on to the semifinals to face Sam Houston State or Villanova.
Ross under pressure. And down he goes back inside the 20-yard line. Sacked by Mike Hardy and Kyle Emanuel, the two ends. Both defensive ends just had a meeting at the quarterback. Hardy got there first. Emmanuel finally got pressure and got there and cleaned it up. Third and long. Ross to Henderson. And he's tackled at the 30-yard line for a gain of seven. He got out of bounds. So it stops the clock with 59 seconds to go. Fourth and the season. North Dakota State appears to be going with their three-man defensive front, which typically means they're going to cover with eight and force quarterback Alex Ross to find a small window in the zone coverage. Three for three on fourth down. Ross over the middle, intercepted by Colton Hegel, and the Bison are a couple of kneel downs away from surviving. Colton Hegel, the All-American safety. This is his 59th career start. He is 55 and three. They're rushing three, dropping with eight, two high safeties of which Colton Hegel is one of them. And he's there as that ball is airmailed from Alex Ross. Wentz will take a knee and the Bison will survive and advance to the semifinals. That's but what a this valiant effort, though, from oh, Coastal yeah. Carolina coming into the Fargo Dome and going down to the wire with the three-time defending champs. Yeah, Coastal Carolina certainly answered the bell. Alex Smith learned from his experience a year ago, played really well. But their North Dakota State is the three-time defending national champions for a reason. You have to close out to beat them here in this place. It is the best home field advantage in the FCS, and you saw why today. North Dakota State has now won 22 straight at home. 14 consecutive playoff games. The champions on to the semis, where they'll face either Villanova or Sam Houston State. Our final score from the Fargo Dome, North Dakota State 39, Coastal Carolina 32. For Kelly Stauffer, I'm Anish Shroff. Coming up next, Holiday Hoops presented by K Jewelers, a top 15 matchup between number 13 Utah and 10th ranked Kansas. So long from Fargo. We send it over to